Well, hello, and thank you for watching Front Range Community College's uh, WebEx or Get Started session online. My name is Hannah Brown, and I'm the coordinator of Outreach and Enrollment Services uh, at the Front Range Community College Westminster campus. Um, I'll be leading you through the Get Started session today, and this session is designed to help you figure out all of the steps that you need to go through to become a student here with us, and then also to learn how to use your student account um, called eWolf. So I'll be showing you how to navigate that um, here in a little bit as well. Um, now you'll see here um, on, our on the screen our main website, frontrange.edu. There is lots of great information on our website. Uh, I'm not going to talk a lot about it today, but if you are interested in more information about what programs we offer, you can go to the Programs and Courses tab um, to check out what programs we have, the catalog, classes, and things like that. Um, you can also see more information about the tuition and fees, uh, information on financial aid, uh, and those kinds of things under paying for college as well. What we're going to talk about today is the getting in process. So uh, clicking on this link, how to get started, will bring you to uh, the enrollment checklist that we have here at the college. So these are the list of things that you need to do to get into classes and then, of course, to stay in them. And we're going to go through this list here today. So um, the first step, of course, is to submit applications. Um, this is, of course, the front range application as well as any applications you may be doing for financial aid. So the front range application, if you haven't done so already, is what you'll want to get done first. You can click on this online application link or the Apply Now button over here, and it will lead you to our online um, application. It's totally free to apply for admission. It takes about 20 to 30 minutes. Um, you'll want to just go through all of the questions, and once you apply, you're admitted. Um, when you're admitted, you will receive a student ID number, also called an S number, uh, because it starts with an S, and then that's what you'll use to go through the rest of the process. Um, if you've already applied, hopefully you do have your student ID number, um, but if it's not something that you received, you can always give us a call or come on in, and it's definitely something we can look up for you. Okay, your financial aid applications um, and financial assistance applications are also things that you'll want to submit as soon as possible. Um, the FAFSA is the free application for federal student aid. Clicking on the FAFSA link does bring, bring you to more information about the FAFSA, so you can um, actually link to the FAFSA form, find out some different information about it, and find our school code. Um, the FAFSA, the free application for federal student aid, is the form that you would want to fill out if you're interested in qualifying for any grants, which would be free money, loans, which would be money you would borrow but then pay back, um, and then work study if you wanted to get a job on campus. So if you're interested in any of those three types of financial aid, you do need to fill out the FAFSA. Currently, uh, we are in the 2015-2016 academic year. This covers the fall 2015 semester that we are currently in, the spring 2016 semester, which we will be starting soon, um, as well as the summer 2016 semester. Um, you'll use your previous, tax previous year's tax information, so 2014 taxes. You'll actually be able to link those on the FAFSA form. You'll need to enter Front Range's school code, which is listed right here, uh, that 007933 number, um, and that is how the information will get sent here to Front Range. Uh, once you complete the form, you will need to be checking your student email and your student account, um, eWolf, and this is the only way we're going to let you know about any additional documents you might need to provide, as well as your financial aid status. Um, so that is very critical for you to, to make sure to do um, after applying for your financial aid. You may also be interested in applying for Front Range Community College scholarships. Um, you can do that as well. Scholarships are open between December 1st and March 1st. You can go to our website to apply for those. Uh, it's frontrange.edu slash scholarships. Okay.
And then this will lead you to um, the scholarship listing as well as scholarships um, offered by our FRCC Foundation. So you can go there to apply um, for those through our website there as well. Okay, so you want to make sure again all of your applications are complete um, and then of course you're watching the Get Started video so you're taking care of that. Um, step three here at Front Range is to take an assessment test. We offer an assessment test called the Community College Placement Test or CCPT and this is a, what we use to determine what level of classes students should be taking in both English and math. Um, there are many ways to be exempt from this assessment test, things like certain grades in certain high school classes, um, ACT or SAT scores, prior college credit, uh, college degrees, things like that. Um, so what you want to do first is to click on this complete this form. Um, link here under step three. This will take you to the assessment form that you'll need to fill out and it will lead you through all of the different uh, exemptions that you could um, uh, encounter that would exempt you from this assessment test. Okay, um, so start off by doing that form. If the assessment test is something that you do need to take, you'll want to uh, click on this math and language skills assessment link and it will lead you to more information about the actual assessment testing of the CCPT. So it talks a little bit about what's on it. Again, it's two sections, math and English. It is not timed um, and it is something that can take a couple of hours per section, uh, depending on how long you do. It is something that you would need to do at a testing center, so you can do that at our testing centers. Um, you can click on the link to find the different hours for our different campuses. But if you're not in Colorado, you can also um, schedule to take an assessment test at a testing center site near you. So there is more information about this as well. Again, you can find the link for the uh, placement form to find out if you might be exempt. Um, and then you can also um, access any study guides that you might want to do for this test. Um, when you're ready to take the test, again, if you're taking it on campus, you'll need to bring your photo ID and your student ID number. Make sure you arrive at least two hours before they close or at the scheduled time. Um, and then just be ready to do as well as you can um, on that test. Um, again, there is no fee to take the assessment test, but it can take a couple of hours, so just allow yourself um, enough time to complete all of those things. All right. If you do need to take the assessment test, you will get your scores basically right away after you do that, and you can move on to the next step, which is meeting with an academic advisor, which is step four. Um, if you're exempt from the assessment test, you can go straight into meeting with an academic advisor. By clicking on the Experienced Advisors link, you can find out information about um, our where, the contact information for our advisors. Um, you'll notice on the right-hand side of our website, you can choose a campus. Okay, so I happen to work at the Westminster campus, so it's showing me that one and the hours here. Um, but you can select any of our campuses to uh, be able to find out what time the advisors are available. If you're not a, um, around campus, again, for either a drop-in um, appointment or a regular appointment, um, you may be able to schedule a phone appointment. Just give your uh, main campus a call and they will be able to tell you if uh, they can set that up for you. Our advisors are the folks that are going to help you figure out what classes you need to take based upon the goals that you have here with us. So whether you're planning to get a specific degree or certificate or you're just going to take some general classes, if you're planning to transfer out, um, they can help with all of those things. If you've taken college classes before, uh, an advisor can also do an unofficial degree audit if you bring in a copy of your unofficial transcript from your previous institutions. Um, they can go through that and then help you um, go through the process of submitting official forms and things like that if you are going to be transferring any classes in. Um, the advisor will also remove the hold on your account, the new student hold on your account, so that you can register for classes. So it is critical that you meet with them um, and again something that you need to do before you can move on to step five, which is actually registering for those classes. Okay. Um, if you are planning to get started in our spring 2016 semester, 
Um, these are all steps that I recommend you do currently, um, submitting the application, doing the get start, or uh, continuing to watch this video, taking the assessment test and meeting with the academic advisor. If you're thinking about a future semester, say maybe the summer 2016 or fall 2016, um, you can do these things a little bit later on as well um, since the registration for classes won't be until April. Um, but again, if you're thinking about starting classes in January and February, please take care of these steps um, as soon as possible. All right. So again, you need to complete steps one through four before you can register for classes, but if you're looking to register for a spring semester, it is open now. Um, the registration for classes does take place on your student account. Um, so your student account is something you can access from the top of any of our websites. Uh, it's called eWolf, so you can just go to frontrange.edu, look for the eWolf link, and then um, go ahead and click on that. Um, this will lead you to the login page, and then you'll notice that you can enter your student ID number here. Um, so I have a mock student that I am going to sign into. Um, okay, so you'll see you enter your S number starting with the S. Um, and so you can sign into this anytime after you actually apply for admission and have that number. Your initial password is your six digit birth date. So what I mean by there is the month, month, day, day, year, year. But after you sign in, you'll be prompted to create a security question and change that password. So you'll use a new password to get in from there. I've already changed the password on this, so I'll go ahead and log in. Not sure what that pop-up was about, but obviously it let me into uh, my account here. Um, and so what's important to note with eWolf is that pretty much everything you need to access online is here in eWolf. And you just go to a different tab across the top depending on what you need to access. So for example, we're here on the Welcome tab. These announcements are really great, important things to check out um, because they're up and coming things that we want to draw your attention to. So it's always great to look at those. Um, you can also link to the Front Range Community College calendars at our different campuses um, so you know when um, drop dates are or holiday breaks are and things like that. Um, you can over here sign up for emergency text messages. If you're taking on campus classes and you want to find out if we're closed for any reason like a snow day, you can sign up for those over here. Um, you can go ahead and do that um, down here on, um, in this section. All right, the other really important thing you do through eWolf is, of course, check your FRCC student email, okay? Your student email is accessed by this little envelope icon at the top right-hand side of your eWolf screen. Um, most of the time, you can just click on that link, and then it'll just bring you up to your email. Now, the first time you sign in, you may need to activate it and set up your account, so selecting a time zone and things like that. Um, but you will, um, and it may ask you for your old password, okay? If you have an old password, or if it asks you for your old password, your old password is your birth date, and it's all spelled out. So I'll just write down here. What I mean by that, your full, did, four, full month, excuse me, your two-digit day, and your four-digit year, okay? Um, your email, again, is the most, most probably important tool that you can find here. I was going to say critical tool that you have here at Front Range, um, just because we're going to let you know about all sorts of things through that student email. It's going to be how we let you know about um, any waitlisting or financial aid, uh, um, residency status, waitlist status for classes, and it's also the only way to contact advisors and instructors. So it's a very important tool, something that you want to make sure you're checking at all times um, and that you have access to as well. Okay, so the next tab I'm going to talk about on eWolf is the student tab. You'll notice that there's lots of great information on the student tab. You can actually um, access Degree Check, which is kind of like an online academic advisor. You can get transcripts once you've taken classes here. You can sign in to your um, online classes. You can find lots of great links to information, you can change your personal information, and all kinds of things. What I'm going to talk about now, though, is this registration tools box, um, which is where you'll go when you're ready to register for classes. 
Um, now you can register for classes again once you complete the enrollment steps. And when you're ready to register, um, after signing into your account, you're going to click on this Look Up Classes link. Okay. From there, you'll be able to select the semester that you plan to take classes, so this spring. When you get to this screen, you actually want to click on this Advanced Search button. So you can do that, and then that allows you to access different fields to search by. Um, here for subject, generally your advisor will let you know what subject um, and also oftentimes the course number that you're looking for. So biology is pretty popular here at Front Range. I'm just going to select that um, as the example. You may have other criteria, but one thing I want to make sure you definitely check is a campus. Okay, so you'll notice that the default is all, but if you're interested in only taking classes at one of our campuses, you'll just want to make sure to select that instead because uh, sometimes students forget to check and then accidentally register for classes at different campuses. So this is a good way to make sure you're only registering for those classes that you intend to take. You'll also notice that you can select online as a campus. Um, we list both the CCC online classes so you can use the control key to select more options. The CCC online classes are the Colorado Community College System classes. These are taught by anyone at the Colorado Community Colleges. Um, there's 13 of us. And they're also, um, the students can also be based at any of those schools. So they are not front range specific. Um, they also run on a little bit different schedule. Um, they usually start a little bit later or have some later start classes. Um, but they do count the same in terms of transferring, so it is something that you can definitely um, still take. Our students do prefer the FRCC online classes. Um, these are taught by Front Range instructors and they are Front Range students. So generally our students find that they can get in contact with the instructors much faster and, and things like that. So again, you can take either, but um, just know that there is a difference there. Okay, so you click Section Search and it's going to list all of the classes that fit your criteria. Again, um, I did not select a course number since I wanted to show a lot of different options in this example, um, but you can to sort of narrow down your searches. Um, so the first things you want to make sure again is always make sure the subject and course number are the, and the title of the class is the actual class you're looking for. Make sure you didn't have any typos there. And then if you're going to take an on-campus class, you can note the days and the times that the classes actually meet. So you'll see here, M is Monday, W is Wednesday, F is Friday, T is Tuesday, R is Thursday. Sometimes you have those together and it looks like this, TR, that's still a Tuesday and a Thursday class, so you still want to come two days a week, okay? And then you can also note the different times that the class meets. So um, you can see we have some classes in the morning, afternoon, into the evenings, Lots of different options there. If you're taking an online class, um, instead of listing specific days and times, you'll notice that it just says TBA. Um, our online classes are classes that you have deadlines pretty much every week, so they're not self-paced, but they are classes that you can sign in to pretty much any time to complete your assignments. Um, so that's why they do list TBA there. Okay. Once you've decided on a class you'd like to take or register for, um, you can go to the number columns here. The cap is the capacity of the class, so the number of students allowed to register. The ACT is the actual number of students who have registered, and the REM is the remaining spots left. So you can see if there's going to be spots still left in your classes. In this case, there are still 13 spots left. So if this is a class I wanted to register for, I would just click on the little checkbox to the left of the class. I'd be able to scroll all the way down, and then I'd just hit the register button, and that would register me for the class, providing I didn't have any holds or anything like that. Okay? Um, you can access this again and again to register for all of your classes, um, and then make sure that the classes that you want. Some of our classes, though, because registration has been open, um, may be closed. So you may see a C over here to the left-hand side, and in the numbers you might see that there's already 24 people registered for the 24 spots. In that case, you can go over to the next columns. The WL columns list the wait list. So you can see if there's anyone on the wait list at all. 
For this first class, um, you'll notice that there's one person on the wait list, but this next class, um, oops, sorry. So this class, there's one person on the wait list, but this class, there's no one on the wait list. So you may have a chance of getting into the class because folks drop for different reasons. If you want a wait list for a class, you use this course registration number, which is the underlying number here, okay? You'd go back um, to our um, eWolf, you'd click on the add or drop classes link, select the spring semester, enter the course registration number, hit submit changes. It's going to again tell you that the class is closed, but you can select wait list. When you submit changes, it will add you to the wait list. Now the important thing is if you are wait listed for a class, you do need to check your FRCC student email, so this one up here, every day. Once your name comes up on the wait list, we will send you an email to this email only. You'll have uh, 48 hours to register for that class. Um, otherwise, you'll get dropped from the wait list and it'll go to the next person. So it is something that you want to really pay attention to. Again, check your email every day if you are wait listed. Other great information on lookup classes happens to be the name of the instructor, the dates between which the class runs, the location and room number if it's an on-campus class, um, so you can see um, lots of things here. The instructor you can contact. Most folks' um, email addresses are firstname.lastname at frontrange.edu. If you want to contact them, just make sure you're using your Front Range email. Um, the dates between which the class runs are important to look at because we do have some classes that start a little bit later. So for example, if I scroll down here, there's a class that starts in February. Um, instead of the January timeframe. So you can see if there's any classes that start a little bit later. Okay, and the location is always just good to confirm that you made sure you selected the right campus or online. All right, again, you can go through this again and again to make sure you get all of the classes that you want. Um, if you run into any snags or you're having any trouble, I really encourage you to call the campus or go in if you're able to, to get some help. Uh, we have plenty of folks standing by on the phones as well as on campus to help you register for classes and get in to any classes that you need, okay? Um, once you're done registering, you can click on this detailed student schedule link. This will show all of the classes that you've registered for. It will also show you room numbers, drop dates, and all of those important things. So it's a great thing to save to your smartphone, print out, or something like that, just to make sure that you have it. All right. So I am going to go back here oh. and, oh, just kidding, sorry, I'm going to go back here to our main website and pull up that uh, enrollment checklist again. Um, here we go. And you can see again that we've got made it all the way through step five. There's also a video here you can rewatch for registering for classes information, and you can also figure out more information about the wait list here as well. So once you've registered for classes, then you have to do step six, which is paying your tuition. Paying tuition takes place also on your student account, your eWolf account um, on the student finance tab. When you click on the student finance tab and you've registered for classes, uh, you'll see an account balance here in this first box. Okay, um, if you are a Colorado resident, the first thing you want to do is scroll down here to the College Opportunity Fund box. You can apply for COF if you haven't done so already, but many of you will have applied for admission um, for COF when you're applying for admission. And again, this is just free money from the state of Colorado. It doesn't count against your financial aid or anything. It's just free money for Colorado residents going to Colorado public schools. We do need you to authorize it though, so this link here, Authorize Cough at FRCC, is something you do need to click on. Make sure I choose to authorize is selected and you just hit submit. This will take away $75 per credit hour, um, so it will definitely change the co cost that you see in the My Account balance. So again, something critical to you. Um, sometimes this pops up when you are registering for classes and that's great, but if not, don't forget to do this extra step. Okay. 
Now, if you are not using any financial aid or you don't have enough financial aid, you can pay in full here online. Um, this, in the payment options and refunds box, there is that option. You can also come to a campus and pay um, in full at the cashier's offices, um, and so that would also be an option. And you can also sign up for a payment plan online. So the payment plan you would sign up for here is the only way to split up the payments for, um, for school. It does cost $35 to sign up for, and then you'll notice here on the pay payment plan schedule, when you sign up, um, how many payments you'll have and if there's a down payment required. So depending on when you sign up for the plan will determine if you have a down payment besides the $35 that you sign up pay to sign up for the plan, and then also the number of payments taken out on the fifth of each month. So again, this is the only way to split up the payments here at Front Range. It does not accrue any interest, um, and you will be able to pay, but you will be done paying um, by the end of the semester. Now, many of our students use federal financial aid. Um, if you are one of those students, you'll want to pay attention to these middle boxes with the financial aid. Now, you'll stay on the financial aid year 2015-2016, but I just want to show you an example of what it looks like when we receive your FAFSA. So I'm going to select last year's. Okay. Um, when we receive your free application for federal student aid or FAFSA, we will list that here and we'll put a green check mark right next to that. Uh, my name and is Glenn so you know Gare. I am the instructor um, of Other things will show up here as well, here and you may either see Utah a green check mark, meaning they've been taken care of, or you may see a red flag. It's an honor and now, if you have a red flag, it. you have um, to note that you don't have financial aid yet. You need to take care of all red flags as soon as possible so that you do get financial aid. So this red flag happens to be a verification form. It's something that you can just click on, fill out, and then turn in. Um, this terms and conditions piece is something that all students will have to accept. Again, it's just a link. You click on it, read it through, and accept. Um, but again, before you do that, it'll be a red flag. So you just need to go through it, make sure you have green check marks. Now, the key thing about payment here at Front Range Community College is that there is a payment deadline, and the payment deadline occurs before classes start. So if you are planning to start this spring semester, the payment deadline is actually January 8th. But if you're going to be starting in future semesters, the payment deadline occurs about two weeks before the classes start. Okay. Payment deadline at Front Range is very important because you need to pay for your classes by that date or have accepted your financial aid or have signed up for a payment plan in order to stay in any of your classes. If you don't pay by the payment deadline, the system will drop you from your, cl from your classes. So it is critical that you take care of that payment. Now, you can register for classes after the payment deadline. However, your payment deadline becomes rolling, and it becomes rolling to the following Sunday. So if you register for a class Monday through Thursday, you have until that Sunday to pay for your classes. If you register for a class the Friday through Sunday, um, you have until the Sunday after that to pay for your classes. Again, this is only after the payment deadline has passed. Otherwise, payment is due on payment deadline date, which again is January 8th for the spring semester. Um, so again, all of these things, either signing up, taking care of all of your financial aid, those are all things that you want to make sure is done prior to the payment deadline, and I actually recommend a couple of days before at least to make sure that everything's taken care of by the, the final date. Um, some things like the verification forms can take a couple of days to process, so it is something that you want to be diligent about checking and then getting in as soon as possible. Now, if you are accepting financial aid, once you've got all green check marks, you can actually go here to accept your award, um, and then again, you can do that online. We also have a financial aid advisors available on campus, so if you have questions about accepting your financial aid or turning in additional documents, you can also connect with them about the, um, the financial aid piece. Okay. After that, uh, you want to make sure that you hang on to your refund card. Um, basically, we will send you a green envelope in the mail. It will look like a junk mail credit card application. When you receive that, you want to hang on to it and follow the instructions inside to set up how you want to receive your refund. So it is very critical that you hang on to that. Um, there's a code inside that you'll use 
Um, you may get a refund for having extra financial aid, but you could also have a refund if you paid for a class and dropped it by the drop deadline or something like that. So just hang on to that envelope when you get it. Um, there's more information here by clicking on this link uh, to find out about that card. All right. So we're almost done here. We've done steps one through six. And then after we've taken care of that, there's a couple of other things, a few last minute things you can do. Um, new student orientation is something that we recommend all new students to college go through. Um, they're offered at each of our campuses and it is something that you can um, attend. Uh, you just click on that link and it'll, again, when you choose a campus, bring you to that campus information. Again, I've already selected the Westminster campus, but you can select one of our other campuses. You can sign up to register, see the dates when they're available, um, find out a little bit more information about what they're covered. But basically, they're there to help new students learn how to be a successful college student and get them connected to the institution. So um, we really encourage all students to do that and to make sure to sign up for those um, as well. If you are taking online classes, you will actually access your own online student organ or sorry, you will actually access your own online orientation. That is something that you can access through your student tab um, by clicking on your course access down here on Desire to Learn. So um, I do recommend going here, um, accessing that, and then what, um, you do need to watch the uh, online orientation. That's separate from this new student orientation here. Your student ID card is something that you can get here. Um, your student ID is called your Wolf card, and if you get it, it can get you into different um, things on campus. You can get into fitness centers. It can be activated as your library card. You can get different discounts in the community, all sorts of things. It just costs $5, um, and you can get that at your campus student life offices. We already talked about getting into your email, so that's really important. Um, and then you can, of course, purchase your books. Um, you can get your books at our bookstore. We have both new, used, and some rental options. Um, but you can also use other websites to purchase your books. That works as well. What I recommend doing is going to the Student tab and clicking on the Buy Textbooks link. Um, this does not actually require you to buy your textbooks, but it is the only way to search for what books you need. You can select the class and you can add the section and then get course materials and it'll show you what you need. So again, if you are wanting to order from our bookstore, that's something you can do. But otherwise, you can use the ISBN number, the edition information, and look and make sure that it's the correct book if you're ordering it elsewhere. Okay. Of course, the last thing that's not on this list but is still critical is to make sure you actually go to classes. For our spring semester, classes will start on January 19th and the week thereof, um, and then um, we'll go throughout May. Um, again, there are some late start classes, so there may be classes that start uh, in February as well. Um, so just check the start dates for your classes. We are a college that uh, does check um, and take attendance for the first couple of weeks of classes, both online and on campus. So you definitely want to be attending your classes and uh, signing into your online classes and participating. To make sure that the faculty know that you're there. Um, once you're in classes, we've got a lot of great resources to help you out. Um, you can find out about some of these on the resources tab here in eWolf. So you can see um, disability services, veteran services. You can find out about academic labs and academic support centers or success centers on campuses, libraries, and things like that. So lots of free services here to help you as you go through your semester. And then you can also find out on the Campus Life tab about how to get involved on campus. We have honor societies, leadership opportunities, different programs and events on campus, student organizations and clubs you can join, and all kinds of things, fitness centers on some of our campuses, um, different, um, and different events. So I definitely encourage you to check that out, look for all of those opportunities, um, and get involved. Um, it does help your college experience for sure. All right. 
So that's basically all that I needed to cover during the Get Started session. I apologize because I know it's a lot of information, but I hope that it was helpful for you in terms of getting to know these steps and finding out a little bit more information and also seeing what you can find on your student account. I do want to encourage you to always reach out to us if you do have any questions. Um, we have our website, of course, and then phone numbers all over the website to make sure that you can connect with us um, and get your questions answered. Um, so please do reach out if you're running into any snags or need any help. Don't give up. Um, just let us know how we can help. Um, again, if you have not already applied for admission, make sure to do that. Um, but chances are your next step is to at least complete the placement form and maybe you take the assessment test and meet with an advisor. Hopefully all of those things go well for you. You're able to register for classes and we'll see you here in classes soon. Thanks so much for listening in.